Greetings, comrades, and I bet you weren't expecting this. In fact, neither was I. So let me give you a little bit of a rundown, get everybody up to speed here. So I originally thought that this particular series was going to be dead, or at least put on hiatus for a very long time, because the save, which I was basing everything off of, was bricked, essentially. Because we're in an early access game, essentially updates over time can, you know, destroy save files. So I was pretty bummed out about the whole situation. I thought all of this work had gone to waste. And then one of these days I just had this idea that, you know what, maybe what I should do is I should try, instead of the one I was basing my playthrough off of, sorry the cat is meowing, why don't I try one of my older saves that has maybe a little bit less progress and lo and behold I was able to get one of those working and actually able to recover some of my progress. So thankfully I was able to get things going once again however I figured that given what's happening in the world right now that there might not be a lot of demand for this particular game but it turns out I was 100% wrong and I have received an astonishing amount of requests to bring this particular series back. So I figured, you know what? Why not? It's been about a year since we checked in on the game. Let's see some of the improvements. Plus, I've got a tutorial for you today. I was building up the entire town just to this point where I could actually do, I guess, somewhat of a tutorial. So let's go over some of the things that we have established since we've last taken a look at Tavadishgrad or Comrade Town. Let's start with Petrograd. Petrograd honestly hasn't changed much. As you can see, I've put a couple monuments here, and this is because the game now has a loyalty feature in which you can basically use loyalty to decide who gets access to which posts. Obviously, you want higher loyalty people for more sensitive posts or what have you and you'll get constant notifications about unloyal citizens so far I haven't been able to do anything about that I haven't been focusing on that in any way shape or form and thus far honestly it doesn't seem to have really hindered my progress so far moving on you remember our coal processing area where we take our coal or process it down into coal which we then use for power and heat and then of course we have our big refinery the money maker of this entire operation and as a Eastern European petro state we have used our fuel money wisely and have invested it into various infrastructure projects which I'm, I'm going to show you right now so as you can see again not much has changed here we have of course plugged in our oil refineries to, or sorry, our oil derricks into the oil refinery, which means we no longer have to pay for oil. So everything is pure profit from here on out. And like I said, we've been using that fairly wisely. In addition to that, one of the new things which I have built is a fuel dock, uh, which I have been using to transport excess fuel down the river and selling it to the Soviet bloc. So here we go, here's our, shri here's our ship, which I have named the Fulin Shrimp. It, because it's a Chinese oil tanker, so I may as well uh, set him on his way. He's been kind of just waiting for oil to build up, so I'll send him on his way, and he'll stop by the crossing pump harbor. He'll pump in as much oil as he can. He can carry up to almost 1,000 tons of oil, 850 tons of oil, but we don't have that much available, so I'm just going to pump in what's in this tank here, 188, and then I'll send them on down the river to sell that and get a little bit of extra money. Other than that, though, things remain pretty much the same here at our established artificial, quote-unquote, or tutorial city, which we started in the first segment of the game. The main thing is from here, obviously, we have Shatkagrad, which is our, our mine town, our mining area, where we mine coal. I've also established a gravel pit to go in addition to this uh, coal area, although I don't actually end up using this gravel pit very often. It kind of ended up being more of an experiment, really. But basically, we have a little quarry here where we take uh, he takes the stones up 
and then they refine it into gravel. Gravel goes down here. And then, basically, I've honestly just been selling the gravel to uh, just taking across the border for a little bit extra money. It, it, it gets almost no money, but, you know, it's at least it's, it's paying itself off. So, on to the first major infrastructure project which I've completed, which ties our republics together. And that is the glorious coal convoy, which takes coal all the way from Shatkagrad. I across a enormous distance honestly I don't know if I would recommend doing this to anybody uh, it, it took a ton of money it took a lot of oil money <laughs> to get this series of conveyor belts funded but at the end of the day it was it's a very set it and forget it project because now that I have this series of conveyor belts taking coal all the way to Comrade Town I don't have to worry about it anymore. I don't have to worry about any, you know, moving my trucks around or running out of oil or anything like that. It all goes to Vodishgrad. And as you can see, we have expanded a massive industrial section onto Comrade Town. And we will go over that. First things first, though, the reason I built this entire, uh, this entire coal line is because I need a lot of coal here in Tavashgrad where I'm going to centralize a lot of my uh, construction and industry. And unfortunately, if we go on the map here, you can see that we don't have, but as you can see, we don't have that much coal around us. So I decided just to build a conveyor belt from the coal mine I already have and take everything over to the capital. And, like I said, it costs a lot of money, but now that it's done, I'm happy that it's done and I, I really don't have to worry about it anymore. So now, it takes tons of coal ore, which we then, of course, process into coal in the capital, and then we send our coal into various different uh, resource uh, silos, I guess you can say. The first reason, the main reason why I wanted coal in the capital is to heat all the buildings that I needed to heat. And one of the things that I did, and here's a good tip for you guys, if you need to get heat from one point to another, do not try and build heating pumps all the way across. Because that's the first thing that I did, is I just tried to take heat from the uh, heat plant over here in Petrograd and just kind of pump the heat along. And what happens is, is that every time you build one of these heat pumping stations, the amount of heat gets reduced a little bit to the point where when I finally got the heat line all the way to Comrade Town, there's so many heat, the heating pumps had diluted it so much that it wasn't actually able to heat anything. So I just had to settle building a power plant here in the capital instead. However, we were able to get heat to Iron Town, Zlizniegrad, which we'll cover in a little bit here. Anyway, as I was saying, so first some of our coal goes into heating, the rest of our coal goes here into the brick factory, and of course as you can see we have quite an extensive industrial sector here, and this is so we can finally construct things on our own without it having to cost any money, and we will see that as we continue throughout the video. But just to give you again the quick rundown, I had to build another gravel pit, which of course workers come and uh, so so at the gravel quarry, you need to have an excavator and of course a dump truck. So workers of course get the stone, they put it in the dump truck, dump truck takes it down to the gravel processing plant, in which of course gravel is the backbone for pretty much all of your construction industry. So as you can see, I've got quite a line of gravel that goes into our main uh, aggregate storage here. And then it splits off into various different buildings. So one building, it comes here, one of the conveyor belts goes right here into the cement plant. And we also have coal pumping into the cement plant as well as gravel. So these are the two resources you need to create cement. Additionally, we have gravel going back here to the asphalt plant which is right beside our uh, gravel plant. And the nice thing about the asphalt plant is it doesn't, I, I thought I would have to build a whole oil 
resource. Uh, you know, I, I thought it would take a lot of oil resources to actually make asphalt. Fortunately, it doesn't, and it's able to pretty much power itself. Just when I have one truck that just brings bitumen right to this asphalt plant from the refinery, and that's all it needs, thankfully. So that's where we get our asphalt from. And of course, it all comes from the gravel. So in addition to that, once our cement is turned into cement, it needs to, of course, be turned into concrete. So we have our cement mixture dump right into the concrete plant, which also needs gravel. So we have another gravel line that comes in and behind here and puts gravel into the concrete plant. So concrete plants are, of course, used for construction, but you also need concrete to build these sort of prefabricated uh, panels, which are used for a lot of construction as well. So... <laughs> Right next to the concrete plant, I built one of these prefabricated pe panel plants. And that needs cement, which you just take from the cement factory. And of course, it needs gravel. So yet another gravel line. So this whole line here, just as you can see, it spits out gravel to the various uh, points that it needs to be distributed to. Now, all of this is important because it links back to the construction office. And the construction office is kind of the hub for getting all your resources together to actually build the projects that you need to build. So I need to kind of put a bunch of different vehicles in here to ensure that they can construct the things you need them to construct. And then you select the areas that they of course get these resources from. So they need to get workers. They get workers right from this platform. The construction site needs gravel of course. They go right to the gravel pit if they need it. They need asphalt, they go right to the asphalt plant, concrete right to the concrete plant, so on and so on and so on. So when we decide to build a project, the construction office is going to take on the project, it's going to dictate the resources that it needs to get it done, and you can kind of leave it hands off from there, provided the construction office has access to all the resources that it needs. One of the things you may have noticed about Comrade Town or Tavadishgrad is that a lot of the roads are upgraded. I have upgraded a lot of the roads from gravel to asphalt, and that is to ensure that our uh, vehicles can travel a little bit more, uh, can travel a little bit more smoothly. We have a couple other amenities here in Tavadishgrad. We of course have a hospital. We have some stores, more bus depots. People, of course, now have access to work, schools, that sort of thing. So now, uh, Comrade Town is, is self-sufficient by and large. And the people here seem to be relatively happy. Um, all 66%. But yeah, it, it all depends on where you go. Some people are happier than others, it would seem. Although, I don't know why he's so sad. He says he can't enjoy any... Um, oh, he can't get to work because he's not close enough to kindergarten? Well, well, we'll solve that bitch when we get to it. We can we can fix that later. Anyway, so as I was saying, the capital has been fleshed out with a lot of amenities. And then moving on to the second major infrastructure project, which I completed that again ties our republics together, is of course this grand electrified rail line, which brings iron from Zelezniegrad to the capital. And in addition to that, it is, of course, connected to various storage platforms we have in Tavadishgrad. So it can then, we can then send resources up at least to Zelezniegrad. And hopefully, one of these days, we can start to build a massive rail line down to Petrograd and really start to connect everything together. But we'll start small for now. So, as I said, we have this rail line, which then, of course, crosses the bridge and like I said the train has access to these warehouses and storage pits which also are accessed by the construction yard so if I need steel I just buy it essentially and leave it in the storage for the construction workers to grab which saves a little bit of money because you're not paying a foreign manpower at least so anyway the train of course here here he comes Unfortunately, it doesn't have any iron because we're having population problems in that small town. But we'll fix that. So, yeah, he's just going to head back. 
and I'm going to have him. He grabs various supplies and brings them over to the town because I'm going to start building here. So I'm starting to station some supplies here, some prefabricated panels and bricks. So anyway, over here in Iron Town, we have built an aggregate train depot where the train, of course, takes the iron which is produced at the various iron ore processing plants in the small in the small town and then sent onwards back to the capital but as i said we're having kind of population issues because uh we i'm struggling to get the amenities here that i need to get slowly but surely things are turning around for zelisnygrad however it's still kind of an uphill battle the main issue i'm having is getting people up here to the iron mine nobody seems to want to go I wonder why. I wonder why. In any case, fortunately this is a relatively new problem because as you can see before we started having these population issues I was able to accumulate about 1500 tons of iron ore in, uh, in the capital. And unfortunately I have this really annoying graphical glitch. I think it, it's still unbelievably this happened in my last computer too and even in the new one here this kind of weird graphical glitch where you got this kind of line that spews out so anyway that kind of brings you up to speed with how things are in our wondrous little republic as you can see we've become much more self-sufficient but it costs a lot of time it costs a lot of money it took this it took about three years of in-game time to all build up and it's all funded by the good old fashioned Tavajgrad petrodollar. So it's, it was so funny, I was laughing. Uh, you go over here back to the Crossin, and one of the new things that they've implemented in the game is tourism, which I haven't really dabbled in yet. But you go to your border crossing, and uh, what does it say? It says, like, oh shit. There you go, small amount of tourists due to low trip rating. It's like, come on, people. We are Eastern European <laughs> Petro Republic. What do you think you're going to get here? You, this is not going to be some kind of prettiest, pretty glamorous vacation. We can see the shrimp filling up here. It really doesn't take it very long. And already we're at, it's at its maximum pretty much. So, or We've already exhausted the tank, I mean. So I'm going to cut this off. And gonna send it downstream. It's only gonna make three grand from 209 tons of oil, which is unfortunate. That's why you refine it. That's where the real money is, is in the refining. Now, onwards to the main event, which I am calling the Steel Tutorial. And all of this really, all of this infrastructure is to get steel up and running because it is such an important component in this game. It builds just about everything and it takes a lot of input to actually get there and i guess i didn't need the construction infrastructure as well however as i stated at the start of this playthrough i want our republics to be as self-sufficient as possible so obviously in order to do that we need to can we need to produce our own construction materials so let's lay out where we're going to build our steel plant or steel mill so I'm going to build it far away from the town, or relatively far away from the town, in the outskirts here. I'm just going to build a gravel road for now to connect it. I'm not going to have my own... my own. Oh no! No, 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 no. Okay, good. So you can cancel the, the contract part way through. I, I built that with my own money, which I definitely didn't want to do because it's going to cost a crap ton. Instead, I'm going to let, of course, my own, my own boys build it because we now have the capability to do it all ourselves. So, as I said, we're going to, we, the main thing we need to do, though, is connect, of course, the construction site, which I am going to have, uh, which I am going to just build out of pocket just because I need it done. And the unfortunate thing is when you do your building for free, Oh boy, can it take a long freaking time. So, anyway. On top of that, I kind of wanted this to be a construction tutorial. And I, w I was going to, like, make my own 
sort of, I guess, video all about the construction, but I guess I want to be, uh, this will also be a construction tutorial, but I really wanted to show you kind of the construction infrastructure that you need. And the main thing it, when it comes to building your construction plants and whatnot is understanding that gravel is pretty much needed for all of them. Once you understand that, you can kind of just build them all in a line like this. Once we have a building, so once we have our plan set out, we of course need to assign a construction office. Normally this can just happen automatically, but I'll just do it uh, manually right now. Oh, like I said, over time, if you just give it enough time, your construction office will automatically pick up the job. But right now I'm just going to force them to do it because I need them to get off their sorry asses and get to work. So what will happen, like I said, the construction office will start to dictate the vehicles and workers in its depot to where they need to go. So right now it's sending out a bus to the nearby platform here to pick up some workers. And it's going to take them to the construction yard. It's also sending out a cement mixer. The cement mixer is of course going to go to the cement plant and it's going to fill up and bring the cement to the construction site. Additionally, we're going to have a dump truck go Where's he going? He's going to go get some asphalt. So he's going to head up here. We have another dump truck grabbing, uh, grabbing gravel right now. Like when everything comes together in this game, it's so much fun. That that's the real beauty about this game is when it all clicks, God, it feels so freaking good. I don't know why, I just do feel an immense amount of satisfaction having all these guys know where they're going and grabbing all the resources and taking them, of course, where they need to go. And you can see one of our, they're also grabbing the, ex, uh, the excavator because they're gonna need it for construction. One of our vehicles is just a, a flat top, or sorry, an uh, open bed, and it's able to take it over and it's going to help get to work. And one of the things I've learned is for asphalt and concrete, there isn't a storage for them, really. There's no place you can just put concrete to store and wait. It's got to be, of course, you got to get the cement mixer, right, to pour the concrete when it's ready. And the same for asphalt. So you don't have a base where you can just kind of have it there waiting. So yeah, like I said, they're going to start grabbing these various products that they need. What do we need here? Um, we've only got 10 tons of concrete. It's gonna need a lot of concrete and a lot of gravel, a lot of asphalt. And then once, of course, that's just for the ground phase. And once the ground phase is done, it's gonna need gravel, asphalt, steel, mechanical components, bricks, boards, everything like that. Fortunately, I have all of those here. And the mechanical components are in the warehouse here. So they have everything they need to complete the project. It's just going to take time. And as you can see, they're already bringing workers over here to continue working on the project. And slowly but surely, they're going to get it done. Like the, the thing is that they will build it over time. They don't need everything there all at once. I have noticed, however, they need to have access to all the resources before they will start building. So for this, I can't just give them concrete and gravel and they will start building. They need to have asphalt as well. So you need to have all of these parameters completed before they will start the building process, but you don't actually need to have 120, or, or 120 tons of concrete ready to go. So one of the tactics, unfortunately, I've had to resort to in order to resolve the population crisis in Zlesnygrad is politely request people in the nearby spring or pool to relocate just down the street into one of the nice mm -hmm. homes that I have selected for mm -hmm. them. Because right here, they, I have no plans for this area. There's absolutely nothing here. There's no power. There's nothing. So at least here, down the street, you have access to amenities. You have access to work. 
There's nothing. Nothing over here, so... Sorry, guys. You gotta pack up, you gotta move it on out. So we now officially have enough resources to finish the first phase of construction. As you can see, our staff is working very hard to get this done. <laughs> you can see the one little guy in the excavator here just doing his darndest. I'm getting severe tropical flashbacks right now. Just of your teamsters and construction workers just sitting around and doing nothing and waiting forever to get things done. I've also decided to pull the trigger on the Tavadishgrad Technical University because we need to start getting our citizens more educated and of course we have the construction capacity now to do this without breaking the bank. So once we're finished with the ground floor of the steelworks, I'm going to get to work on the university. And the main reason I want to do this is because right next to the steel plant I want to build a mechanical components factory because steel feeds right into mechanical components and that is another very important construction material and material in the game for lots of things. As you can see if you want to build any kind of advanced vehicles you're going to need mechanical components. Well winter is here and thankfully our heating seems to be holding up at least. The winter has been pretty rough on us a lot of people have died in the winter and our population continues to fall which is unfortunate and another unfortunate thing is that the members of Zelizhnygrad when it gets too cold they cannot uh, <laughs> the heating structure cannot help them they cannot maintain the heat so when it gets really cold they start to they, it starts to bite them thankfully at negative one they're all fine right now but because of this, I've commissioned a, a second heat exchange coming from the plant, and I'm hoping that that will help them out next winter. But it's not going to be very helpful right now because it's going to take a while to build. They've already dumped a lot of steel into this, and uh, it's it's going to take some time. So that's not a rush. Construction slowly but surely continues on our steel plant. So it's now summertime, and we're still not done with the steel plant. Building a project like this with your own resources really definitely makes you appreciate what a complicated project it is. And one of the nice things, though, is that once you kind of have the resources at your build site, you can actually choose to pay or not pay depending on your needs. So right now, as you can see, if I were to complete this, it would only cost me 37,000 rubles, whereas at the start, I think it was like 300,000 to, to build this thing. So basically, I would just say, <laughs> just pay a bunch of foreign labor to come in and, and finish this off for me, which I probably will do here, um, depending on how long it takes them. It's still going to take them another 3,000 work days to finish this monstrosity. They've already laid the concrete and all the other foundations, so that's wonderful. But... As it's nearing completion, it'll be time to build up the inputs that are going to go into this steel plant. So, as you can see, I already have <laughs> we have you know this uh, conveyor belt monstrosity that looks a lot more complicated than it really is. Uh, as you can see, I've got these kind of three boys sticking out, and that is just uh, in preparation for the steel plant. I had a little coal line come on out. Uh, and move out to the outskirts so I could easily connect it here. So, that being said, let's connect it. Okay, so that will be cool. Let's get some iron. Iron, of course, is over here. Oh, come on, let me... God damn. I was hoping not to have to build another one. Alright, I hope all of those will be uh, f will be powered. So, I can just leave that there for now and we'll put that together once the steel plant is finished. The nice thing is that once the steel plant is finished, I'm going to actually 
instead of you know using my own inputs, I'll just buy them initially and make the steel to finish all of the conveyor belts that I need to bring the resources. So that'll save me at least a little bit of money in the meantime. So on a rainy October day, the Tvarishgrad steel mill has finally been finished and it looks beautiful. It's quite, it's quite a building, quite an extensive project. And as I said, we don't have all of our inputs finished yet. All of our conveyor belts aren't done yet. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna purchase outright the iron and coal so I can get some steel manufactured because buying it is extraordinarily expensive. In fact, I should prob- oh yeah, I've stopped buying it entirely. So hopefully once we get some workers there, they can start pumping it out and uh, they can finish up these conveyor belts and other projects. As you can see, I had to build these like temporary roads out here so all the construction workers can get out to do their job. Either way, it's a major accomplishment. Having steel production is a huge, huge deal. Like I said, it's been the number one economic drain on our society is purchasing steel. And now that we can build it ourselves, we can basically, yeah, we can expand our infrastructure projects much more broadly and actually fund them with our own, with our own, uh, materials which is a huge benefit so it's november now and our steel plant is i would say it's in full swing but it is in swing uh we don't have quite the workers i've got a nice batch of new workers coming in to work at the plant but it's been a pretty slow going in terms of manufacturing steel but that's okay because it's all about saving money and resources in the long run and at least now a lot of these conveyor belts are being built on their own. They're just grabbing the steel from the plant and taking them to the necessary build sites, which is great because these conveyor belts are extremely expensive otherwise because, uh, you know, it's like 40,000 rubles almost uh, to buy the steel and mechanical components. Like I said, we still have to purchase the mechanical components because we can't, we don't have the technical capabilities to manufacture it on our own yet. But we're getting there. A nice statue that they can look at. Let's build a nice creepy statue of Lenin that every time you look out, <laughs> you see him just staring at you. Takes a lot of concrete to build this son of a bitch. Anyway, so for now, there really isn't much to do besides kind of let the simulation run and slowly build out these conveyor belts. And over time, we'll start building up our steel supply. And then we can kind of move to the next phase. So the next phase is I want to start building our railways, but as you can see, what does it take to, to build this? We need, of course, the prefabricated panels, gravel, and steel. The electrical components we'll just buy outright. Uh, eventually we'll get to manufacturing our own, but fortunately you don't need that many to manufacture these uh, electrified railways. So the next, the next phase basically is to start using the steel to build our own railways and then we can connect all of our towns together and easily get supplies from one point to another. And then of course, as I said before, we can start building food. Food is a huge expense for us, so I'm thinking of taking these kind of abandoned villages right out here and then kind of convert them into farming villages and then hopefully they can start sending crops into the capital and uh, everything will be, will be laughing from there. And then, like here, we go to our uh, our import ledger. Let's go. Let's see this year. As you can see, most of our import, outside of steel and mechanical components, have come from food, meat, clothing, alcohol, electronics, cold fabricated, blah 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 blah. Um, so basically, over time, I'm just gonna go through and try and eliminate these one by one. So after food, we're gonna go for meat, and then clothing, and then alcohol, and then so on and so forth. The beautiful Tavarishgrad Steelworks is now completely independent. We now have our convoys in place, and they're dumping both coal and iron into the steel mill, and as a result, we're just laughing. We're laughing. We are just going infrastructure crazy right now. As you can see, we're 
the uh, we're using so much steel that we cannot keep any steel available in the plant before it is used up and as you can see it's an incredible boon to us right now with only 4.6 tons of steel in the truck it's worth like 2,000 rubles which is which is great so we're saving tons and tons of money by producing this ourselves, and eventually I'd like to be able to sell our excess materials however I actually got to get it to the border so to do that I started the construction on a rail office here and our rail construction office here and they are going to do the long tedious job of starting to build a rail line down to Petrograd and that will be our first major project. In addition to some infrastructure projects I've started the Technical University, Tavajgrad Technical University is continuing magnificently and it's over halfway done now thankfully it still needs a little bit more material, we need some more steel and whatnot, but we'll get there. And I've got some new flats right across from the university being built. And one of the things that I've done is I've built a loop around the entirety of Tavadishgrad. And as you can see, we're, we're finishing up some of these, building uh, some of these roadway projects. And this is again one of the things I just love about the game. So, Unfortunately, we don't have any asphalt, so we can't. He's not doing anything right now. But I just love some of the detail. Like, you zoom in, and you can see the asphalt paver paving the roads. So what I've done is I've tried to create a loop all the way around the city. And it hasn't gone 100% to plan. Because unlike Petrograd, Tavadishgrad is not a pre-planned city, so I'm kind of planning around it. But I have built a giant loop around the outskirts. And this is actually inspired my, by my own hometown of, well not my hometown, it's where I currently live in Edmonton, Alberta, where we have a big loop around the city called Anthony Hende, and it's just like this freeway that goes all the way around the city, there's no lights or anything like that, and it's just a really nice, efficient way of getting around. So I, I figured, hey, you know, try and do something like that, and we'll see once it's done. Uh, you can see the one part is done over here, but like uh, you can see some of these vehicles are taking their sweet time in terms of finishing up the uh, finishing up the roadways here. I've also decided to pull the trigger on another coal plant which I mean we have the coal here anyway and we're starting to import too much power for my taste so I want to cut that down and build some more of our own so that's going to take some time Again, the nice thing is like I'm not in any rush anymore. I can kind of sit back. We've got our steel plant. And I can just let our construction workers do their thing. I'm hoping that I can finally get things sorted out here in Zelizhnygrad. We have a hospital. We have some stores. It's actually a functioning town. And thankfully, people aren't leaving. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like having two heat exchanges has done anything. And I should have learned my lesson before because I've, I've had similar issues with heating. I thought this would be enough, or this would be short enough that it wouldn't be an issue, but it looks like you can really only get away with one heat exchanger of distance before you won't have the capacity to actually heat your town. So sadly, we're gonna have to figure out another way. So what I've done already, is I've started to extend the coal line. So yeah, I've started another coal line and it's going to start to, it's gonna take coal ore to Zelezhnygrad so we can actually heat people there. We're gonna build a, a heating plant there and that just seems to be what you're gonna to have to do. Like there, if you wanna ad adequately heat your city, you're just gonna to have to build a heating plant directly inside. Uh, or, or very close to the outskirts because you can't pump that heat very far at all without running into real issues. But when it comes to cities that are doing well, our planned city of Petrograd is doing extremely well. In fact, I'm so happy with this design. In fact, I think it's incredibly effective and has held up through the updates very well. So well, in fact, you can see that the people within these tenements are 100% happy. They couldn't be more happy living here. They are just ecstatic. So, 
this is just a, obviously a very effective design. It has been so. This just obviously is a very effective design. I'm very happy with it. As I said, it's held up extremely well, and I almost need to never check in on this city. Everything is going so well that I almost never need to bother with it. Lastly, I've started the process of building up our farm, and the outskirts of Tavadishgrad, I'm going to use these big open fields here between these two villages to build a nice farming town here, a nice farming section, and they'll be able to feed our people, hopefully. And in addition to that, I'm also going to try and see if I can put some ranch and meat and maybe even some alcohol production all in this area. This can be kind of like the food hub here. Like I said, these nice open fields make for a good place to put down farmland. So hopefully, if I'm really lucky, I'll be able to get all of that done within this video. But it's taking quite some time to get all of this together, as you may imagine. I think these citizens are coming over from here to help build the farm. <laughs> quite neglected. So now that I finally have the extra money, I can dump it into some luxuries, like a tower crane. Which honestly, I probably should have just bit the bullet and bought one of these sooner because it is helping out tremendously when it comes to building our uh, various construction projects. So now it's working on the technical university and the technical university is coming along swimmingly. It's almost got all the resources that it needs, just a little bit more steel. I'm just kind of like leaving this right now to its own devices. It's a very low priority project. Unfortunately, I think they're gonna have to go through the winter with what they have. They'll be, by and large, okay, like I said, except for the extremely cold days. But hopefully by <laughs> 1967, they will have actual heating. Okay, well, it's just a touch bit of steel left. The thing's almost done. I got the money. That's a nice thing. I'm just gonna fa fund the last seven Gs. And bada bing, bada boom. Vladisgrad University is ready and open for business and the big thing is that I want to get this get that research engineering so after another exhaustive period of time as you can see we have our large farm up and running it's going to take I believe it takes four fields and in order to plow them I'm going to need farming equipment and unfortunately I only have one tractor, one harvester, and one covered haul, so I can only do one field at a time. Needless to say though, this is a lot of food, so one field is going to do for now, but I just gotta wait for some more money to come in. We're still really hungering for steel, and I'm trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to get these crops across. I'll probably just, maybe, maybe I'll just drive them across and as you can see we're building a new finished road here so we can actually drive across a little bit faster this rickety old bridge is complete garbage all the trucks they only drive like 10 kilometers uh, per hour across this thing so it's, it's a real waste of time this guy put any okay perfect and now as you can see we also have our railway crane deploying and he's going to start to build up some rail tracks as you can see I've got a secondary rail track being built which bypasses the logistics hubs here and goes outside of town and it's gonna link up here and then we're gonna have like a double track going down towards uh, to, uh, Petrograd so that's the long-term plan obviously that's going to take a huge amount of time and resources and predominantly steel we are just always on the hunt for steel. We're always low on steel. I accidentally spent all my remaining US dollars on steel, so now I have absolutely no US dollars. It's only ruples from here on out until I can actually reach the western border and trade with them. It's now the winter of 1968, and as you can see, we're broke, but don't worry, we'll continue to get money coming in. But the important part is, is that our farm is of course done they've brought in the crops that they could unfortunately some of them went to waste because we didn't have the space available to house them now we have a grain silo 
But it's okay because the crops we do have is more than enough. As you can see, we've got 128 tons, but a lot of that has been distributed to the new food factory, the Baraharad Food Factory. So now we can finally officially feed our people. And right now I'm just sending a truck back and forth to, yeah, it's, he's going to grab food right now. Um, oh no, ho, 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 shit. Fuck, I put the wrong one and he loaded up instead of unloaded it. Oh well, it's not a huge deal. Either way, uh, so we now officially are feeding our own people. It's not a whole lot right now, but we will expand that as time goes on. And we also have a distillery, so now we are boozing up our own people as well. And then, of course, this is going to be our food production area, the Baraharad <laughs> food, uh, the Baraharad farms. And... In addition to that, we have a livestock farm which is currently in production. It's not done yet, but once it is done, we'll have a uh, like a, a barn for them, and then we have a literal slaughterhouse where we of course slaughter them and create meat. So this little farm village will produce all the food for us for now. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to really expand it too much because I don't think it can pipe in heat that far. So this little town of Borspain is going to be kind of like the outskirts of uh, Tvadishgrad where they'll still have heating so I can build some modern buildings there and, and stores and whatnot. And any excess workers can either choose to go work at the farm over here or go into the capital and fill up those types of jobs. And we are now building a mechanical components factory which is coming along slowly. But that's okay, I'm not in any rush to actually complete this. But the important thing is that once that is done, we can start to move on to more advanced components, which is what our next video is going to be about. It's going to be about how to produce and manufacture those more advanced materials. And then, of course, we have the official railway, which extends all the way to Tavadishgrad to Petrograd. Of course, it's not done yet. We just have the um we just have the construction plans laid out and obviously this is going to take quite some time to actually finish however it's in the process <laughs> it may take a year or two to actually finish this railway um but of course i can always grease along the process with any extra money that i have in my pockets the summer of 1968 is upon us and with that, I think we can put a pretty good close to the 1960s here. Our little republic has managed to claw its way out of the first basic resource chain and become pretty self-sufficient. So when we come back, we're going to be looking into some of the more advanced materials and how we can manufacture them. I'm hoping to go into things like aluminum and then, of course, electronics and advanced manufacturing and I'm hoping to eventually get to the point where we can manufacture things like our own vehicles and trains and planes and boats all in-house all at home one thing about our Republic that I really like is how this little town of Zelezniegrad is shaping up or Iron Town it's becoming a really cool mixture of like old-school European, Eastern European houses and architecture with that kind of, you know, Soviet tenement and sterility that you kind of come to expect from the era. Of course, with imposing industry creaking along in the background. So over time, I expect this kind of aesthetic to only grow. And of course, that's already happening in the capital as well. So I want to wrap up this video with kind of like a too long, didn't read, and give you the cliff notes of everything you need to know to build sort of successful industries in your own games. So when it comes to construction, the big thing you have to know is that gravel and coal are the two components that start off the whole construction chain but gravel is a the backbone especially and you'll need to have a continual supply of gravel and just to kind of reiterate we have our gravel aggregate here 
and as you can see, these um, these lines spread out and go into the back of all the various different buildings here, the cement plant, the concrete plant, and of course the prefabricated panel plant, and allow them to uh, produce the materials that they need. So just so long as you've got a good source of gravel, pretty much everything can fall into place from there. So in order to build the buildings, once you have the actual material, you're going to need to build a construction office. And I've actually built another one here in Tafarishgrad to increase our construction capabilities. And you'll need a variety of different vehicles to make sure that construction can proceed successfully. You'll need things like a cement mixer to bring cement. You'll need a bus to bring people to the construction yard. You'll need, of course, dump trucks to bring materials to and fro. And there are some other vehicles to consider. If you need to level ground or build the foundations, you'll need, of course, an excavator. You'll need an asphalt layer to lay asphalt. And if you have the money, it's always a good idea to splurge on a tower crane because that will help your construction proceed a lot faster. When it comes to steel, the important thing is obviously you're going to need to get a pretty reliable source of steel. It's an extremely important resource in terms of production. And one of the nice things is that when you get all of these construction materials in place, you can actually start to really build these projects because if you don't have the materials, it really becomes prohibitively expensive at a certain point to actually build these things. On that though, there's not too much to say about steel, just that it took way longer than I thought it was going to, to actually get to the point where we could produce it self-sufficiently. Lastly, let's wrap it up with food. As you can see, our farm village is now in full swing. We're in the middle of August, so our harvesters are doing their thing and harvesting their food, and our trucks are bringing it back to the farm. Once they get to the farm, it's then distributed by forklifts to the various points of interest. So now you can kind of see our factory connections in action here as our forklifts continue to take crops to and fro. In order to get this set up, you're going to need a forklift garage and a factory connection crossing. You simply, once you have your forklift garage, you just add the various buildings to the connection list and by and large, they'll be able to manage things by themselves. Right now, I just have them everything on store 100%, so they're going to keep bringing crops out of the farm until they have no crops left or until the storage facility has 100%. Something to note is that if you have a short connection like this, right here between our livestock farm and the livestock hall, you do not need to worry about forklifts. They will automatically transfer from one factory to another without you having to do anything at all. And now that we have our food production available, we can finally start to feed our citizens. So you might ask, how do we do that? Well, right now, I'm thankful I didn't build a railway all the way out here to the farm. We have our covered haul trucks simply able to take the food into town without too much issue. So they grab the food and they take it right to the Tavarishgrad warehouse, which is right here. It's also connected to the main rail network. And as you can see, it has a little bit of al well, <laughs> more alcohol and a little bit of food. And in order to ensure that every store is now getting access to that alcohol and food, you need to build a distribution office. And as you can see, we have a distribution office here right behind the university. And it's connected to the warehouse, which is connected to the various stores and pubs and malls in Tavadishgrad. And as you can see now, all of these pubs and, well, we're low on food, unfortunately, but we've got enough boosts so we might need to up our food production that being said though that being said though our trucks are taking food and delivering them to the various grocery stores and malls in the city 
So I've decided I'm going to build the upcoming chemical plant here, and maybe even plastics factory. I haven't decided on that yet, but definitely the chemical plant here because it needs crops. So we can easily get the crops from the farm down the street. And with that, I think we can close this chapter on our Republic's rebirth. And as I said, we will expand the next parts into more advanced materials. And in addition to that, I'm hoping to continue the process of tying all of our towns together and eventually moving westward and joining us with all of these small towns along the river here and eventually reaching the NATO border. So with that, I want to thank you guys for watching. This has been the Comrades signing off. And I hope you enjoyed this little rebirth of our Soviet, of our Workers and Resources Soviet Republic series. And until next time, you guys, take care. Oh man, I'm really depressed. I'm going to have to destroy all these heating pipelines for no benefit. I can't claw any of the resources back or anything like that. Just a colossal waste of time and money. But then again, if we weren't wasting excess amounts of time and money and resources on wasteful infrastructure projects, what kind of Soviet Republic would we be? Well, sorry, I gotta add a post addendum to this video. So my plan of heating the outskirts of Tafadishgrad has failed. I don't understand what the point of having a heat pump in here is if only after one heat pump, it's not gonna provide enough energy to be able to adequately heat this village here. I'll show you just to prove it. We'll uh, fund this construction. I should have enough money. It's negative 14 degrees and immediately you'll see the temperature is going to start to drop. So unfortunately my <laughs> new heating tutorial is just fucking build a heating plant in the area that you want to heat and pipe in coal. Um, if you don't want to pay for it outright, which I don't. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And lastly, when I booted up this game today, I noticed that we had another update, which adds some nice quality of life features. For example, here, if we want to build a road, it'll start, it'll give us, for example, protractors, which will show us the angle of our turn and stuff like that, which is very nice. But the main thing I noticed is that it adds in plumbing and I was wondering when this was going to be a feature added into the game and it turns out very very quickly unfortunately we cannot access it because in order to access plumbing you need to start a brand new game I am happy though that thankfully this save didn't or sorry that this update didn't break my save that being said um, you know I'm gonna have to relearn this whole system so I'm not going to abandon this city by any means or anything like that, but at some point I'm going to have to, I will start probably a new city just so I can play around with these mechanics. In any case, that is now officially the end of this video, so I don't imagine I'll have any more postscripts after that. So that's it for now, and you guys take care. So as a little bonus tip, I'm going to talk quickly about snow plows. This is something I had trouble with at the start. But snow plows, in order to get them going, you're going to need a technical services office, which of course you can assign snow plows to. At that point, they'll automatically start plowing the roads based upon a priority that you decide. And it also looks like this is going to be integral to the water and sewage systems of the game. So that being said, once you set it up, it's pretty easy and your snow plows will start doing the work automatically.